Okay, let's rock and roll. I'm gonna have to sit down shortly to, what is that, the Pflugerville Water Tower? Right behind us to the police in Walmart. Look at that lovely, there's, well there was 800 pound bales of hay there, but, oh look, what's there? Is that the Pfluger farm? Heinrich Pfluger? Yeah, forgive me. I've already put in a couple thousand feet today in an attempt to make this a fairly, yeah, I just sit down on my go bag. I didn't bring my cushion. This gets me up to the proper. Uh, well. This may be, well, what is the current gate, but obviously built by the, telling by the rust and so on, it's hasn't been painted in probably 30 or 40 years. It's wide open. There's a gate right there, but. Nobody locks it because this is Flugerville, Texas. This ain't Austin. You can see in the background there. I'm going to have to put on my glasses for... But... You've been asking for... Where am I at? It's... I should have shot this in the morning. But it's afternoon. I've gotten in about 2,000 feet. I've been fairly active. Um, it's towards the end of the day. <laughs> and... Uh, Thought I'd bring you all up here. Wasn't exactly free for me, you know. It's I got to do the Uber XL. The driver was a nice lady from New Orleans, New Orleans. She pronounces her English correctly, and Louisiana, Louisiana. She says Louisiana. She's and I specifically requested. An Uber XL that can handle a wheelchair. It was actually more room than I needed. It's so I'm gonna kind of begin here. And the great thing is I can go downhill without having a lot of destabilization, shaky image problems. Because now, as you can see, I'm in my wheelchair. Hey, hobo shadow, everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's getting to where my laugh is not, it's phony, it sounds like, anyway. You know, just to kind of refresh my memory and uh, so I'm going to kind of, sorry, I'm going to take even take off my hat now. I've already shed the two outer heaviest layers. It's a warm, sunny afternoon, Monday, uh, whatever the heck it is, December 4th, and uh Actually starting right here at the gate of the Fluger Farm, which apparently goes all the way across where I was located is down in the the kind of the creek valley area. It's always gonna be cooler down there, especially under a live oak tree. It's I still actually needed that outer layer. And certainly don't here in full sun wearing well, now I'm down to gray from black to, okay, let me release the other brake. I'm sure I can, I don't think anybody's gonna really bother a man in a wheelchair who's using his feet to propel himself. Let's go through the gates of Pflugerville. You see it clearly? And actually the title of this episode is going to be Penny Lane. Texas and that's the German penny Finnick P-F-E-N-N-I-G I think is the correct Finnick, Eine Finnick Pflugerville Heinrich Pfluger probably knew, I, gosh I forget my own father's father's name uh, no we're not to tell you the truth, right at the moment, I'm having a, a senior moment because the because there's one Heinrich in there that's, and I think they're, I'm not sure there's such redundancy in these names, but 
Mr. Heinrich Fluger came here. And I'll try to give you a, the definition of flug. Has, in this case, they're calling it like a one who plows. Fly is also kind of maybe part of the root word for flyer as in flugplatz. Fluger would be like a plowman or not, test, not te te technically a, a farmer. I think that's Bauer. 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 And we're here on Penny Lane. Not the Beatles Penny Lane. Penny Lane, Texas. Finnick Lane. Which, as you can see, ain't a bad place to... You can imagine what that real estate... The Wild Wild West is right over in that direction just a couple miles. This is a very irregularly shaped city limits. And in my search, they actually already knew this spot was here nearby. And I wanted to be sure and stay within the city limits because you go over that way just a little bit and there ain't no goddamn law. I'm sorry, I'm already doing it. I may become vulgar and restrict this to age 18 or over. You go that way just a little bit and you're in the cesspool of Austin, Texas. It's like Satan's backyard and like San Francisco and all them other places. So, I'm not going to entirely rely upon what the official city of Pflugerville says because they got one major uh, agricultural and geological item wrong. Whether it's a typo or whether they're just, I don't know. But this is not the eastern edge of the Blackland Prairie. This would be actually completely west by many, many miles of the little thin strip of Blackland Prairie coming down out of Oklahoma to over there to where the original colony was, where my people are. And that's really confined to mostly the really kind of dead in it around Lee and, and Burleson County. And going through their stuff, actually in the what was established as the colored section of this town, I found what is probably one of my black cousins, a certain Mr. Caldwell. Now bear in mind that Caldwell ain't in Caldwell County and Burleson ain't in Burleson County, so pay attention, please. But these for all of you, like you barrel fans and stuff that are interested in, what the hell is that? It looks like some kind of nest right beside that tree. I'm gonna have to put on my glasses to... Okay. No, I'm not. That's just a little vine and some on trimming. And I don't think I want to get close to that vine, although it is wintertime. That looks like maybe a sumac. Yeah, and over there, that's. That ain't. Oh, it could be grapevine. The. But you can see that's pretty nice little view there looking over several square miles of yet to be developed property that's rapidly going to be approaching that million dollar an acre range. Actually, it's there now. And this is the Tri-Cities area. Actually, this is Pflugerville Water Tower behind me. Then a little bit over this way, you can see the Round Rock Water Tower. And then you got, there's another one over there too. You can see the Georgetown water tower. I'm pretty sure that's it. And then two more past that. Actually, I see a third one on the horizon. This is kind of the gently rolling plains of the Blackland Prairie. That's, I mean, of the, the Texas Prairie. That's limestone based way down, depending on where you're at. And this is actually at the edge past technically of what we call the, there's another one over there another water tower just to get you oriented and that there is what we call a turkey vulture a buzzard now I'm gonna move slowly here because and actually doing what I'm doing right now can lead to a clot so I'm gonna there's some round bells right there this isn't really there's a little bit of pollution or something in the air. It's not quite as clear as it was the other day. And 
frankly, I was sitting a couple of feet higher in that vehicle. And yet again, another <laughs> couple of water towers. Water's a big issue in this area. They're already starting to rob to the east. That's when you, those water towers over there in Williamson County, which even my attorney nephews don't like to drive through because they might go <clears throat> have some Hanyak with a badge and a gun go sideways on them. They, Williamson County has a reputation. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, see those bales like that. Those run about 800 pounds in, in a dry year and stuff. They're actually worth a lot of money, especially if you're transporting it to the cattle feeder. But actually, I don't think I've shot any videos. I've shot some. And right there is where the, you can see the, I'm sorry, my, I get a little wobble in my finger. You can see the red target sign, or as we like to say, Target. And that's the, that is the Stonehill Town Center shopping lot. Yeah, I'm hard pressed to say exactly where the city center is because to the best of my knowledge, it's right there where like you see all them giant ass condos, which, eh, you know, where all the tech workers live and will eventually sell to some other, somebody else. But let me get on a bit with, and there, this is typical of the local architecture is we've gotten away from, because we know we plan, we've gotten away from any kind of wood and we've gone to steel on the telephone poles and utility poles. It's only logical, you know, zinc coated, you know, be 50 years or more before they need any kind of maintenance. They do have some, on that one, they actually do have some wooden uh, cross members, but I don't think I mentioned it. I have a little doubt that because there was a wave just prior to 1850 in which my father's father, just like Henry Pfluger, left Germany and came here I'm sorry, I'm moderating my voice based on, I don't know why I'm doing it. This headphones all right. These are noise canceling. I've got Dolby. I need to keep speaking without all that. Uh, oh gosh, I'm looking at things at the distance. I'm, but Henry Pfluger and my great grandfather, uh, who was actually was married to a Jewish woman, Dockel, Sophia, Spelled S O P H I E, Sophia, not Sophie, Sophia Dockle. Uh, they escaped the conscription into the Prussian War. They didn't want to become con cannon fodder. Come on, get real. We're talking about a couple of big, smart German boys who know, you know, which way the wind was blowing and to get the hell out of the way because there was a fire, you know, a wildfire of human insanity heading their way. So they came here to Texas and uh, this is where Henry Pfluger ended up. And actually my, my great grandfather ended up marrying the daughter, one of the many daughters of William Wayne Hill. I'm talking to y'all straight Texas history. I want to tell you that right now if the city of Pflugerville's listening you need to correct the typo. This is not east. This is not the eastern edge of the Blackland Prairie. You got that completely wrong. 100%. I mean, come on, man. You can. There's limestone outcroppings here where in the original colony, we got to go in chalk, the Austin chalk. It pops up around here due to the undulations, nature of Because when you study geology in Texas, you have to study... Texas geology. And if you guys had studied geology 101 and biology 101, I wouldn't have to listen to that that 
weirdo King Charles III talk at the Dubai meeting, what, just yesterday, it's on Sky News Australia right now, or was a couple hours ago. Priest up there repeating the same old shit and fear mongering and crap. Oh, home, home on the range, where the deer and the buffalo roam, where seldom is heard. Never mind. My sinuses are plugging up. And beyond that little ridge over there where Stonehill's shopping mall's at is you get a good view into to Round Rock and oh the cost there's a Costco over there and all it's like a this is like a rich people heaven because it's not East Austin, South Austin, or even the near North Austin is still plagued by in this city, they have a blue line here, a very thin blue line where you cross that line for what you get away with in Austin, now here you're going to jail. Okay, right there in the center of your field, that kind of, that little shrub right there if I'm, is a baby mesquite. Oh, it has, for those of you who are not familiar with wood, mesquite, produces one of the hardest because when I was a little kid I cut down a bunch of them that were more than 100 years old I, I studied the dendro dendrochronology found in those rings my dad actually I cut them down my dad drug them to the well I, he may have even used the truck to and stacked them at the back of the property and 20 years later I began cutting them up for the best prime seasoned Mesquite, the finest, sweetest cooking wood on this planet, longest lasting coals. And when you first crack it open, even though it's aged 20 years, it still has a purplish hue. And it slowly oxidizes into this beautiful milk chocolate brown. You don't need no stain on it or nothing. It's some of the hardest and wood around. It's and that those particular trees were were very good because you could see there were long periods of drought and the dendrochronology of the tree, studying the tree rings. And the smaller, the tighter the rings, the harder that wood's going to be. I'm actually kind of I've already told the Uber later I'm gonna be out, so they got I actually got off annoying. I I looked at it under under Google Maps and. I didn't think I might I would have a good shot. I didn't really actually know from satellite. You don't know that the old Fluger farm sign is on that gate. I'm sure it has several gates. Let's get this straight. That's, but they leave it open, obviously, for whoever's cutting the hay or probably got the hay leaves here. They're just, this is how you do things if you really haven't ever owned land. You have to put it into some sort of, if you put it into agricultural production, then you get a tax break. Simple as that. If you got enough acreage, you lease your haylands, your grasslands, for somebody to come in and cut it, and they will pay you plenty enough to pay the taxes on the property. You can imagine what the valuation on this property is. And off the distance there, yeah, you can see the, that's a round rock water tower at a distance. You might have to kind of blow up the screen to see that a bit. I'm kind of disappointed in a way because I could have swore I really had a, it's really all due to the angle of light. I should have shot this in the morning so it would show the, the buildings that are beyond those condos and stuff. Show the other, because right now, unless I check Google, I can see a long, because I'm far from being the eagle eye I was when I was a young boy. But this is kind of what it looks like in the heart of Texas, although I got a, uh, I don't know, I kind of got a similar grade on, I'm on the highest hill in Burleson County and I've got about the same grade. I'm, let me take a look at my time now. I'm, it's only been 20 minutes, it seems like forever. I might break this up into 
more than one shot. So I'm just trying to give you a little motion to the camera. That's actually the kind of the usual water tower and additional water storage tank over there. God, there's a real old water tower right now appearing about the center vision. The sun isn't causing too much. And I'm not sure what the hell that is. That could be any of a number of buildings. And I'm not entirely sure. It's That actually might be the original Dell. That thing like had that iron, the way Chipotle, they had like that unsealed, uncoated iron that just rusts and stops rusting after a point. But, uh, to the best of my knowledge, see actually to the, in this direction, there are still like some large and it's, you won't find really many condos. There's in this direction, which is not really visible from this vantage point, or a lot of, uh, you know, single family dwellings and some of them very expensive and some very nice, like recreational areas and uh, hidden lake and you know, lake, it's like Lake Pflugerville kind of thing. And uh, there's a lot of million dollar homes here. I'm sure a lot of these condos over here are running pretty close to that too. It's it's actually in this, there's a little cluster around here because and that direction is Interstate 35 and over here is uh, State Highway 130, which is actually a toll road. And it was, was built to divert heavy truck traffic off of 35 and make them pay a toll and get out of the way of people and, uh, you know, Teslas and electric cars and all them German cars and them monster sized Cadillacs you find around here. It's as you don't really find until you get down around the city of Lakeway. I'm actually slowly easing down to the, actually, I may go back to my, hmm, sorry, I'm having to scout because as I remember going past, there was a curb cut and I actually gave them an address that was, yeah, right there is 1504 Penny Lane, Finnick Lane, Finnick Lane. And, uh, Gosh, that's probably actually some of the flugas. If you own, please, as you can tell, and actually most of Austin is this way. Large areas, they've been trying to plan since the 60s for a lot of, because if you build too much impervious, I know that I can talk over those passing cars, you'll hear me clearly. If you build too much impervious cover, then the water won't get down into the aquifer and the local, I think it's called the, I know it's bigger to the west of here, it's called the Edwards Aquifer. They have, they, when they design like the clover leaves and every one of those clover leaves, there's one or more of these really deep, just really kind of small lakes called catchments to feed water back into there to the few wells that are permitted to pull off of that aquifer for the city of Austin and other, actually Williamson County and San Antonio is robbing me of my water, you know, 60 miles plus east of here. And I'm not getting paid for it. Every, every payment for my acreage is $150 a month. Thank you very much, uh, Post Oak Savannah Water Conservation Group. Selling our water for nine cents a thousand. And that's only after these, the consumers have paid for all complete line that lay in wall pipeline. I may have told you all my stories of my less than comforting dreams of a dying megalopolis. And I think it's starting here, there to the south. It's going to explode out along the I-35, Interstate Highway 35 corridor to the north, south, east, and west. It's already creeping towards my home area. It's already, you know, it's, it used to be quite a ways to get to the, 
to what looked like Osta, but now it's just a blink of an eye and we're there. You can start off deep in the woods and in no time, you're on the edge of Austin. Young kids out enjoying their day. That bike she's riding is actually pretty expensive. That looks like one of the redos of the Schwinn or whatever. I saw a guy the other day that had a Uh, in this direction, you got, well, I'm pretty sure it's like Dell's actual headquarters and an Amazon distribution, you know, arrival and distribution point for this whole region is, uh, within the city limits. So, no, oh, that's a lot of taxes for the de development of, they've actually, the area of town from around here to, to over there is. Actually, even along the freeway, I think actually I think the city planners did a very good job to controlling traffic flow. You might have to drive a little bit longer, but then you have less chance of a collision. And uh, it also feeds, you know, because they don't want to build these giant intersections prematurely. It's not bad, you know, thinking. So they do have appear to have some fairly decent city planning here, although I'm at actually at one of the critical junctures that they're going to have to expand pretty soon. And I don't see how they're going to do it without really, they'll do it though. They'll have to take the property almost up to the, they'll have to take, use every bit of the public easement and then uh, use eminent domain from more of it or the, from the mall owner that I've been so what you see is actually like a very large mall that's not anywhere close to being developed. And I can tell I'm going to have to go back uphill. The curve cut that I was looking for for a driver to pull in isn't there. Man, it's amazing how on Google Maps, it's, gosh, that's a real big, but, I don't know what else to really tell you. It's most of the people that live here are really decent people. They're, if nothing else, like the people who are from other states, they're with, you know, big tech, big companies. They really have to be professionally well behaved all the time or their job is in jeopardy. Then you got some old time Karens like the one that was throwing hundred dollar bills at me all day long, trying to bring me to Jesus and convert me that are obnoxious old timers and part of the real hardcore gossip group around here. And I'm actually at that point where if I don't take off another layer of clothing, you can see I'm down to my cardigan and uh, that cardigan may have to go if I stay here much longer. I hate to go back that quickly. I'm sorry, I'm trying to stabilize the I hate to go back much quicker because uh, I'm, for me, this is not a minor expense, a you know, small expense. It's not far, but I tip, I tip well if the driver obeys and arrives with a vehicle that is not just drenched in fragrances and stuff. She was, her vehicle was spotless, immaculate, and no odor free, fragrance free. That's the only way you're getting a $5 or more tip out of me. So this area right here is part of the flight path going into what used to be the uh, Bergstrom Air Force Base, now the Bergstrom Austin International Airport, which for the last, I need to actually put the lock on because possibility I might just kick off and in backwards into that traffic. <clears throat> There it is. Oh. Actually, I think I may, because it's only about 10 feet in elevation, and then I might go down to Walmart and just call it quits for the day right here at about 30 minutes. Anyway, 
This has been a kind of a basic introduction and overview of Pflugerville, Texan. Note the correction that this is not the eastern edge of the Blackland Prairie. This is beyond the western edge. So y'all need to get that typo or your error in scholarship corrected. You don't, you're not gonna see black soil around here unless they've had landscapers working on it for 20 years and creating that blackness on top, that humus that's fully decayed and given off nitrogen. So there's one thought thing I say about Texas is it's full of bullshit artists that are no, in no way related to we original Texans. Even Mr. Fluger didn't come here till 1849. My people was here by 1819. So that may explain it, the, why I'm only like a fourth generation Texan because in my family, it tends to be like the last child and the last child of large families. We have uh, generally longer Schwanstukas, to use the correct German word, and longer reproductive lives than other people. And I think I may be, I will actually give this one a, just a PG-13 rating. So here's your introduction to, to uh, Pflugerville, Texas, overlooking the little valley where the, there's constantly flowing water. They have a little bridge down there. And to tell you the truth, I'm thinking about tenting up under that bridge this winter. I already know, I already got one local poking in. He goes, where are you sleeping? And I, I answered him in my sleeping bag, where are you sleeping? And I can be kind of cagey because really, I have gained the respect of too many of the old timers here. Old timey Texans know an old timey Texan when they see them, both by our dialect and our conduct. And while you've seen me act like a clown, they know that I'm filming myself, that that's not my everyday social interaction. You've seen my social interactions. So that's it, about 31, 32 minutes. Maybe I'll come back another day. Maybe I'll shoot from the edge of the Walmart parking lot. I don't know. All I know is it's actually, it's about to start to cool down and about 30 minutes, this would be a nice place to stay the afternoon. I might sit here a while and have a cigarette, uh, take my medication and think about it. But anyway, for the minute, for the moment, this is Kent Kruger, original Texas, Jew Boy Deluxe. A little, y'all wanted to see the scenery. It's, you really can't hardly see it for all the trees and stuff. That's. The nature of this area is we like green stuff. We like it whether it's a one gram cotton linen mixture or that little bit of scrub right there. We still, we hate cutting down green stuff. We only do it to create things like that where the machinery doesn't get jammed up, messed up. And because in the past, if y'all don't know it, cutting hay and moving hay was really labor intensive, bending over, running a scythe, and then all oh, the pitch in the hay that, you know, dehydrating. Oh man, it was really some monster work. And now we can roll up, you know, we can cut, rake, and bale 800 pounds. It's, of course, it takes uh, a couple of different uh, implements, but life is so much easier due to a guy that I asked earlier, do you know who's really, to one Sir Michael Faraday, who never went to any school, public or private, in his life, is making this communication possible in your public school and probably even your private institutions. And it really stress the, his importance in everything that we have around us. He's the guy who discovered field theory. You know, even Einstein would be nobody without him. Einstein wouldn't even have a basis to go on. So maybe I'll address that next. Is uh, Einstein standing on Sir Isaac Newton's shoulder, maybe an upcoming. I just did that sibilant problem that Hugh Laurie has, and that tells me how my tongue is getting tired. Been talking for 30 something minutes. This is a uh, end of uh, introduction of Pflugerville. You ain't gonna see no drone footage. I can steal that. <laughs> no, that was a real, <coughs> I really have been busting out laughing correctly lately because I'm Anyway, enough said, I need to go. Actually, I need to get out of the sun. These blue eyes, 
that light right there bouncing off the the uh, atmosphere that's really hard on my eyes one final scientific note the s cones in your eyes the blue cones short wavelength are the most vulnerable in your eyes protect your eyes especially if you're at a computer screen a blue computer screen all day or if you're outdoors you need to be wearing polarized shades that filter out short wavelength and line it up and minimize it that's it that's all i got to say kind of like simply red that's all i have to say that's all i got today